It's been a crazy couple of weeks in aviation. We've had not one, not two, but three near mid airs. And on this channel, we talked about the B-52 that uh, kind of came close to a regional jet. And we're not going to go into that one. You can check it out in the link below. But I want to talk to you about the other two. The first one happened just out of Burbank, California. Let's take a look. So 496, for direct flaps, contact LA Center, 12518. 1458 Okay, so the first one involves Southwest 1496. Burbank Airport's an interesting airport. I've been in there many times. It's a very short runway and it's surrounded by great big buildings. Um, you really got to be on your A game, both going in and out of Burbank. And it's also in a very congested airspace. So there's lots of not only airliners flying around, but there's also civilian traffic, corporate traffic, everything else, very congested part of the country. Uh, and Southwest is about to have a near near midair with another aircraft let's see how it works out leaving one one thousand one five thousand direct flap Okay, it takes a couple of minutes for this to transpire, but you can see on the screen the two aircraft kind of converging. So it's what we call um, constant bearing, decreasing range, right? When you get that constant bearing, it doesn't, the other airplane doesn't change relative to you. They stay right there on their windscreen and they're closing. Now the TCAS system, the tra traffic collision avoidance system is going to kick in. Remember, it uses ADS-B in and out. Both of these aircraft have ADS-B. They're transmitting. The TCAS system is now calculating the closure rate. And at some point, the TCAS system alerts Southwest to descend. Right about here. Cover 496, uh, complying with RA, traffic downside. Okay, what does it mean complying with an RA? The first thing you're going to get from that TCAS system is a TA. That's a traffic advisory. So as I'm flying along, I'm going to, my screen's going to light up and I'm going to get a little uh, yellow uh, round circle next to an aircraft symbol that says uh, traffic, traffic, just like that. It's an audible voice. At that point, I look on my screen, see where it is, look outside to see if I can see the aircraft. And I'm waiting now for an RA. That's a resolution advisory. It sees I'm getting closer and closer and I need to resolve the conflict. That's RA. And I'm either going to climb or descend. When I get that RA, I'm going to click the autopilot off. I'm going to click the auto throttles off and I'm going to hand fly the airplane. I'm going to either put the nose down or I'm going to put the nose up. I actually get a little green bar on my screen of how far to bring the nose up or how low to bring the nose down. It's very nice, very kind of pilot proof in a sense. You can get a little over aggressive with all of that, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Navy, frontal 230, 1496. Okay, so basically it happens just that quickly. And you're thinking, wow, is the whole thing resolved? Yeah, it, it goes like this from the cockpit. I hear traffic, traffic. I look down at my screen, I look outside. Uh, almost immediately right after that, they got descend, descend now. That's the computer voice. They'll look down at the little green uh, marker down below, turn off the autopilot and the auto throttles, and push the nose over to do that. Now, a descending kind of breakout here is one that is going to cause people to kind of go flying in the back of the airplane. If you pull up, it's positive G's. So that's not as less, it's less likely to get an, anybody hurt in the back of the airplane. But if you don't have your seatbelt fastened and the pilot noses the airplane over, you might come out of that seat. A couple of the flight attendants were hurt on this because they were in the aisle doing their service. And again, you, you have to be, as a pilot, you have to be aggressive enough to avoid the other aircraft that's coming towards you, but not so aggressive that you might hurt somebody in the back of the airplane. We practice this all the time. Every time I go down for training, we do a number of these, you know, climbing or descending uh, breakouts on these uh, resolution advisories so that you get kind of smooth with pushing the airplane over, but you don't run into the other airplane coming towards you. Were the pilots overly aggressive on this? I don't know. I, I wasn't there. I can't say. I do know that a couple of people got hurt in the back. They may have had to be that aggressive to avoid the other airplane. Um, but at the end of the day, everybody walked away from it, and it was not a mid-air collision. It's just a near mid-air collision. So this whole thing resolves itself in just really kind of under 
10 seconds altogether. When it's all over, how do you know to go back to your normal altitude? The computer then will say clear of conflict. And once you hear clear of conflict, you're free to keep looking out. You'll fly back up to your assigned altitude and you'll make the uh, basically the transmission that they made, which they were responding to an RA. And every air traffic controller now knows why you descended when you weren't commanded to descend. And they'll sort it out later as to why that happened. That was the first one, all right, out of Burbank. The second one was the one I referenced earlier, the B-52 flying over Minot, North Dakota, that had turned their, their um, transponder off because they were flying over an air show and didn't want to set up didn't want to light off everybody's screen. The next one is the one to me that is just incomprehensible. And you might have seen some of this on the news, but it's Aero Mexico coming into uh, Mexico City. Really long runways there in Mexico City. Lots of mountainous terrain around. It's kind of challenging to get in and out of Mexico City. Been there a few times in the day. Uh, and Delta has been put into a position or line up and wait, it's called on the runway. So line up and wait means you're put in position at the end of the runway. The next instruction that you're going to get from the tower is cleared for takeoff and you're going to sit there until they give you that instruction. So you're poised and ready to go. You're listening at the same time for other air traffic and so forth. It's not uncommon to be put in line up and wait and hear another aircraft be cleared to land on the very runway that you're sitting on. You don't know how far back that airplane is. Is it five miles, 10 miles? You'll be long gone before that airplane ever gets to the runway. So it's not uncommon to hear that or for them to clear somebody to land on a runway where there's already an airplane sitting there. What is uncommon is what happens next. Let's watch this. Okay, so we're going to give you subtitles for what's being said in Spanish. So the first thing I want you to notice is this. The international language of aviation is English, not Spanish. So, and you go, well, they're, they're down in Mexico City, so of course they're going to speak in Spanish. They're not supposed to. Every transmission is supposed to be in English so that everybody, everybody that flies an airplane is, supposed, is English proficient. It says so right on my license so that we can all listen to what's going on. I'm not assuming that the Del Delta pilots were Spanish proficient. They're not supposed to be. They don't have to be. So they're hearing something in Spanish and they have no idea that this guy has just been cleared to land on their runway. So that's number one. So they're, they're taking a liberty down there that they shouldn't from the tower and also the pilots. They should be speaking in English and they're not. Okay, there it is again, you know, now a few seconds later. And we'll get right back to this, but first, a quick word from our sponsor. I'm tired. Gosh, I'm ready for a break. No time for a break. You must keep working. Okay, this guy is trying to run me into the ground, but honestly, I'm not mad because I've got magic. Magic Spoon, that is, today's sponsor. Mm. That's the stuff. This is a cereal I wish I had as a kid. Same great taste, but now it's made with grown-up ingredients. We're talking 13 to 14 grams of protein, zero sugar, and just four to five grams of net carbs in every serving. High protein, low carb, totally guilt-free, and perfect when your producer won't let you have a break. And if you're more of an on-the-go type, Magic Spoon's treats are just as awesome. 11 to 12 grams of protein, only one gram of sugar, and no sticky, chewy nonsense like a protein bar. They're crispy, crunchy, and just plain good. Basically, Magic Spoon is childhood reinvented. Fuel for the body, nostalgia for the soul. And hey, if for some wild reason you don't love it, and you will, Magic Spoon has a 100% happiness guarantee. They'll refund your money, no questions asked. So click the link below or scan the QR code on screen and get $5 off your first order. Now, if you'll excuse me. Hmm. And thanks to Magic Spoon for sponsoring today's video. Sponsors like this help us to make more content for you. More Spanish transmissions. 
Okay, so what we missed here was there was a little bit of cutout in the from ATC, but the, in English, they said to Delta that was in uh, lineup and wait, you're clear for takeoff on five, right? We get the second half of the transmission from Delta that says, all right, clear for takeoff, five, right? And then we can't hear exactly what he said after that, but clear for takeoff, right? And so they're going to push the power up and start rolling down the runway. Watch this. About 20 seconds later, flight 1631, Aeromexico, goes right over the top of Delta. Okay, now you hear from Delta. Delta chimes in and says, Delta 590, we're holding on the runway. I I can't imagine seeing that in front of me, right? You're on a takeoff roll. The runway is supposed to be yours. Uh, you don't know if anybody else has been cleared on your runway because they did it in Spanish, not English. And at that moment, you're at about 60 knots rolling down the runway. And over top of you comes a jet to land on the same runway. And I'm like, oh, my word. First of all, what were the Aero Mexico pilots thinking? I don't care if you were cleared to land on the runway or not. If there's another airplane on the runway, you've got to go around. You don't just go over top of them and land on the runway in front of them. It's just, it's it's unbelievable uh, that they they did that. And you're going to hear a couple of those responses here in just a second. He lands on the runway now. Okay, doesn't go around, lands on the runway. Delta rejects. Wow, says Delta. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I can't put it any more succinctly than that. I'd probably key up the mic and go, Wow. What did I just see? Somebody else and another airplane it, watching all of this in Spanish is going to say something. Listen. Increíble. Increíble. Right? Some Spanish guy watching this whole thing says, unbelievable. Right? Wow. Unbelievable. Yep. That kind of sums it all up. Now, the, the tower is going to chime in. Hablando Superman. Yeah, another little comment. Okay, Delta 590, you said to make a right turn off the runway 5 right on Bravo 4, correct? Okay, so we didn't hear the tower. Uh, we do hear Delta responding, saying, go go down the runway and turn off on Bravo 4. Um, they're going to do that. They're going to proceed down. Now they're not going to take off. Delta 590, we'll make a right turn off the of runway 5 right on Bravo Okay, she just repeats it again. And what they did is they went down onto Bravo 4. They sat there for about an hour. And I think everybody was trying to get their story together. Um, Delta certainly doesn't have any story to get together. Um, but the tower is trying to figure out what in the world is going on. They eventually taxied back to the gate. Uh, and then, of course, the whole investigative process starts. Um, everybody's got to go in for your analysis. Um, you get pulled off the airplane, um, it, even the Delta crew, right? And certainly the Aero Mexico crew and all the people working in the tower, the whole operation kind of gets pulled out right now because there's got to be an investigation into how something like this happened. This is, is this a near midair? Well, it's a near collision with an airplane flying and an airplane rolling. So yeah, near midair, uh, but should have never happened. And there were, there were several places to trap the threat. So that's what I'm trained in is if there's a threat out there, trap the threat and then mitigate the threat. So the first was um, ATC should have been speaking in English. That was the first threat that they could have trapped. The second is the Delta guys could have said, hey, I'm sorry, could you speak in English? Right? That that would have helped, but that's not that's a lot to ask of them. Uh, the third is Aeromexico is cleared to land, and they need to be looking out at the runway in front of them. Clearly, they had to be. Did they not see the airplane clearly sitting in in line up and wait on the runway in front of them or even on the roll. I, again, that's another threat that the Aeromexico pilots should have uh, trapped. And then once you go over top of that other airplane, you land on the runway, I'd push up the power and I'd go around and, and get out of there. So a lot of threats here, a lot of them were not trapped. The investigation is still ongoing to this day. We'll come back uh, when there's any sort of report on this as to actually what happened and how this thing should have taken place. But heads up on the part of the Delta crew to reject their takeoff so quickly. Uh, and again, no fault of theirs. They don't have eyes in the back of their head. Uh, they can't. And other people looking out for them, the Aeromexico crew and the tower in Mexico City should have trapped this threat. And this should have never happened. Three near midairs in the last two weeks. If you're wondering, are near midairs up 
this year. In fact, they are not. They're about half of what they normally are. Normally at this time of the year, there's about 17 near mid airs reported somewhere around the world. Uh, I think we're at seven right now, so that's a little bit less than half. But when they make the news, they make the news in a big way, especially this one with Aeromexico. Now you know, I'm Captain Steve. Fly safe.